Hey guys, it's me, Saren, back with another video. Um, this is going to be my white male rage video, which I've been saying I'm going to make forever. Um, so here it finally is. Um, one of my regular commenters, who's awesome, left a comment on my Chapel Hill video that I put up last week asking why I felt the shooting was a form of terrorism. Uh, and that person went on to say, I have the, the quote here, terrorism is using violence to further a political cause. It's not clear here to say that's what he, and by he, they meant the killer Craig Hicks, was doing. Um, I disagree, and respectfully, and I feel like this comment really facilitates the whole discussion, so I'm just going to start there. In my opinion, it is very clear to say that terrorism is what Hicks was doing. This whole shooting was about using violence to further a political cause. And that political cause was white supremacy. This was about using violence to further white entitlement. And it was about using violence to pacify Craig Hicks's white male rage in its purest form. This was about a white male atheist being so angry and so entitled that he feels that his religion's on opinion, his religion's on opinion, that his opinions on religion should be everyone's opinions. And he was willing to kill for that, you know? That was a terrorist act. If we were talking about a radical Muslim that had followed three young white atheists into their home and executed them, shooting them point blank in the head because he felt like their atheism was insulting and that they should subscribe to the Nation of Islam, what would that be? What would that be called? Terrorism. It would be terrorism. And every headline would be blaring Muslim radicals commit heinous, triple murder, crime, act of terrorism, in the name of Islam, and you know, it would be, it would be sensational, it would be sensational. There would be no question, like what we're seeing now, of the motives. Because right now everything is a question, just like I said in my video last week, because he's white, he's getting this extreme benefit of the doubt about motives and what were his motives. There would be no question of what the motives were if the roles were reversed. It would be a very clear terrorist act and a hate crime. So let's not pretend that that's not what this is just because we're talking about a white guy, right? Let's not do that. 87% of mass United States U.S. shootings are committed by male Caucasians between the ages of 13 and 56. And the majority of these shootings revolve around perceived injustices, you know, that they feel that they've been subjugated to. And the majority of them are also, are also revenge killings of people that fall outside of their, you know, entitled white male block. So women, blacks, Muslims, Hispanics, you know, anyone that falls outside of that block. Elliot Rogers' revenge you know, killings. He revenge killed women because of the perceived injustice of them not dating him, right? The Columbine killers revenge killed other students because they felt that they were outcasts who were deprived of what was rightfully theirs in terms of popularity, you know? Like, I could go on and on about this revenge killing and this sense of, of injustice because of this white male entitlement. When they don't get what they feel like they deserve, they become filled with this sense of rage. You know, this is about white male entitlement, deservedness, and deadly rage. And Salon ran a brilliant piece after Elliot Rogers' killing spree, which of course I'll have a link. This is probably going to be a really link-heavy video, but the links are awesome and I would advise you guys to check them all out in the description box. Um, but the Salon piece was called white guy killer syndrome, Elliot Rogers' deadly privileged rage. And it went on to say, you know, it's time for America to admit what it's long resisted. White male privilege kills. Another young white guy has decided that his disillusionment with his life should become somebody else's problem. And that's it. That's it. 
Like, that's it. That's it right there. That's the thing. That's the motherfucking thing. White male entitled rage, rage, revolves around the entitlement that white men feel as a direct result of white male privilege. It's a direct result of living in a world that is catered to them and revolves around them and where they literally run everything. And from the time that they are able to internalize concepts, it's there. It's on TV. It's in movies. It's in the things that their parents say. It's in the things that society tells them. Every day, this idea of white male entitlement, privilege, and supremacy is is reinforced okay this concept is that as white males they should have everything and that they are just the masters of all they survey like on some lion king type shit everything the light touches is your kingdom white man and then they say well, what about the shadowy lands over there and they say oh well that you know the shadowy lands that belongs to the hyenas you can't go there and then that white male entitlement is challenged and they become filled with white male rage you know white male rage is the rage that they feel when that entitlement is not fulfilled when it's blocked when Muslims have the audacity to move in next door. When women have the audacity to not respond to dating advances. When black people have the audacity to talk back or to attempt to vote or to not get their asses on the sidewalk, Darren Wilson, or to exercise their rights. When any of these things happen, their white male entitlement, their place as rightful masters of the universe is challenged. And white men have proven time and again, again and again and again, that their response to this challenge is deadly rage, is white male rage, is violence and mass murder. They show again and again and again, 87% of the time, you know? And... All of white supremacy is a political cause. I'm going to make that really clear because I have a lot of people that seem to feel like these concepts are, are not political. And they are, you know. All of white supremacy is a political cause. White male entitlement is a political agenda. White power is a political agenda. Just like black power is a political agenda. Just like feminism is a political agenda. Just like I always say, these are definitive political st stances to take, you know? So to kill someone in a fit of white male entitled rage, because again, that's what this Chapel Hill shooting was all about, for daring to, for someone daring to challenge your white male authority so you fucking kill them, for daring to challenge the political system of white supremacy just by fucking existing and your headscarf and what is supposed to be my white male space. For daring to fucking exist as a black person in my white male space, in my world, and my reality. Killing someone for that is a political act of terrorism. That is a political response to a perceived threat to the political agenda that is white male supremacy, white power, and white privilege, period. And it is entirely fair, in my opinion, to call this terrorism and to call these people part of a domestic white terrorist group. Entirely fair. Completely fair. The numbers support it. The stats support it. But since these people are white, since they have, as I always say, the motherfucking complexion for protection, Again and again, instead, we see them labeled as lone wolves, disturbed loners, and mentally ill, and disturbed, and brilliant with problems, and I can't believe he would do this, and he was so smart, and he had such a bright, promising future, instead of fucking calling this shit what it is. They're terrorists that belong to a white, domestic, motherfucking, terrorist-ass group, you know? All these excuses are made to continue to coddle them and encourage this sense of white male entitlement and white supremacy. And terms like terrorist and terrorism become racialized to mean brown people, just like the words thugs and gangster have become racialized to mean black people. 
Again, despite the facts that studies have shown that mass murder such as this is rare and virtually unheard of in black and brown communities, and especially in the Americanized, often urban context of inner city schools and communities filled with black and brown bodies. We never see this kind of violence. So who are the real thugs, gangsters, and terrorists? And I have a quote here that I want to read to you guys. Uh, it's from a piece called, well, it's from a piece called White Privilege and Mass Murders in America, but it links to another piece that's also called it's called Nice White Boys Next Door and Mass Murder. I'll include links for both of these pieces. You should check both of them out. And this quote was included in both of them. Whenever white men commit mass murders, it is just a freak, isolated incident. But when we look at other crime statistics for minorities, the reason given is that it is something innate to their culture. It is those people, right? When we talk about violence terror, terrorism, terrorist acts, and race, when we talk about Muslims, it's those Muslims, those terrorists. When we talk about black people, it's those black people, those thugs, those gangsters. When we talk about Hispanics and Latinos, it's those gangbangers, those cholos, like those, those people. There's something wrong with those people and their culture and their rap music and their religion and their gangs. We never talk about the terrorism of white people and their white male rage, which, as I said in my Chapel Hill video, has been a calling card and a hallmark of the white community as far back since they stepped foot on this country and they wiped out the Native Americans from their sense of entitlement and their sense of deservedness to a country that wasn't even theirs. And they responded with rage and savagery and deadly intent. Let's talk about their culture. Let's talk about what is innate in white culture. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about that. Instead, it's lone wolf, mentally ill, disturbed. They have this really funny thing going around Tumblr, which I have here. White male terrorist bingo. And it's like, it's like a bingo. You see, like a bingo card. And it has like all these different little points that you could like put your little bingo chip on that you know the media is that you know they're gonna pull when the suspect is white no news coverage oh we got that lone wolf oh we got that mentally disturbed suspect was provoked suspect feared for his life he's nice he was a nice person he is insert nice description of suspect here says family and they already have Craig Hicks's wife on TV giving a full statement about he was such a nice person and a wonderful person and it made my me feel like my brain was melting out of my ears and made me furious because a nice person doesn't fucking follow three kids into their apartment and shoot them point blank in the head you fucking bitch like isolated incident brilliant but has some problems all these excuses that are used over and over again instead of doing what they try to do to us. Well, let's examine the white culture and the white male rage and the white entitlement and the white supremacy and the white privilege. Let's examine these systems. Let's examine not only how these systems are, you know, interfering with and influencing and having an effect and, and affecting, you know, people of color and black people and Hispanics. Let's examine how it's affecting white people because it's making white people fucking crazy. It's making them nuts. It's making them sick in the head, you know. White male rage is a thing. White domestic terrorism is a thing. And it is a direct result of the indoctrination of our white supremacist society and it is a direct result of the white power movement as a political agenda. Direct result. Period. Period. And I also want to add that white women are not exempt. Y'all ain't exempt either. Okay? Because white women also tend to subscribe to concepts of white privilege and white supremacy and will also respond with hostility when those concepts and those systems are challenged. They will, like, go watch my On Feminism video, you know. Um, but white women at least somewhat understand what it is to be marginalized as a woman because of gender. Um, being both white and male seems to typically lead to just an unchecked sense of power. And white male privilege that can and often does become deadly when it turns 
into rage. Deadly white rage. <laughs> so that's how I feel about white male rage and terrorism. Um, which I've been meaning to say forever. And before I go, I also wanted to add that I've seen a lot of people, this is kind of like more Chapel, the Chapel Hill shooting specific. Um, I've also, I also want to say that I've seen a lot of people saying that there is no evidence that they were murdered because they were Muslim. And it's just like, listen, the same exact excuses are used to justify the murders of black people. Literally. You know, the same exact excuses were used to keep black people from voting. Like I said in my Selma video, you know? You have people that are like, well, you know, like in terms of Selma and like voting. Well, how do you know that he made you stand on your head and recite the alphabet backwards before he would allow you to vote because you're black? How do you know he made you do that because you're black? Where's your proof, you know? How do you know he shot the 12-year-old black kid because he's black? This and this and this and this and this and this. All these other reasons. Like, stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Like, this concept that there is no evidence or proof that something was racially motivated or hate crime or whatever is absurd. And it's an easy way out, in my opinion. It's an easy way to pretend that we don't see what's going on. And I said this in my Racism is Not Voldemort video, which I will link for you guys. That video is literally about people looking at discrimination as some type of like big bad, like Buffy, like some type of evil force. And I also said this in my new racism video. People tend to have this antiquated idea of what discrimination is what racism is what a hate crime is um you know what these things look like and often if it's not you know a fucking burning cross on somebody's lawn or you know someone screaming out some type of slurs we want to pretend that maybe it wasn't racially motivated or you know whatever that maybe this really had nothing to do with them being black or being Muslim or being a woman or being this or being that. And I personally think, I think that it's naive and I think that it's dangerous. I think that it's a really dangerous way of thinking um, because it allows you to just kind of move through your life and without really thinking and fully grasping what is going on. And working for change. I've been saying this to tons of people having these conversations about color, you know, this colorblind. I'm colorblind. I don't see color. I don't see race. If you don't see race, just like if you pretend you don't see gender, just like if you pretend you don't see religious affiliations, if you pretend you don't see these things, then you you are choosing to also not see the injustices that come along with that. And if you're choosing to not see injustice, you're a part of the motherfucking problem. You can't work with us. You can't put in the work to actually work towards true equality because you're just pretending you don't fucking see shit. So you could just miss me with that. Like I don't want to hear about that, you know? People ask these questions. Oh, if the N word, if the N word wasn't used when a cop shoots an unarmed black kid, how could it be racist? If Craig Hicks didn't call them ragheads, how could it be an anti-Muslim hate crime? You know, like stop. Like the family has stepped forward and said the neighbor has had disputes with the the kids in the past about the way they look, and we all know what that means. I know it's easy to say, no, it was over a parking space. It's so easy. It's so easy and it's so comfortable to not examine more deeply what we're actually talking about. You know, oh, it's just a parking space and I'm not going to look at the context at all. I'm not going to look at how a dispute over a parking space could be easily escalated when one party is a Muslim and the other is a white atheist who has already had issues with these people because of their religion, you know? It's easy to say, no, he was shot because he was playing with a realistic looking BB gun without looking at the context of racial disparities in police killings or the disproportionate use of force against black people. It's so easy. It's so easy, I know, and I've had these types of conversations with white people, black people, Hispanic people, all kinds of people that don't want to put a magnifying glass and, you know, throw the light on the nasty things that are happening because it's hard. It's hard to, to deal with that kind of stuff and process it, you know, 
I know, trust me, I understand. Um, but these things don't exist within a vacuum and context matters. Like I always say, like I say every video, nothing exists, within, nothing exists within a vacuum and context matters. And here with the Chapel Hill shooting, you have a guy that was a very radical atheist who very publicly made statements insulting religion, um, you know, and his feelings like religion was the root of all evil and this and that, who then kills religious Muslims after making racist statements about their religious appearance and head coverings and stuff like that. Like, what more proof is necessary for this to be a religious hate crime about them being Muslims? Like, you know, people needed him to be like, fuck ragheads, white power, you know, something like that. And that's never going to happen because it's 2015 now. It's not 1965. And people need to stop using outdated concepts of what racism is and like what hate is and discrimination and, you know, other problematic behaviors. Let's not pretend that we can remove context from these type of occurrences and insist on proofs and receipts you know, that fit an outdated model of what discrimination and, and hate is. Like, let's stop. Let's stop that. Let's stop that in 2015. We should be able to look at situations and come to a critical conclusion without burying our heads in the sand. You have a brain. Use it. Um, so, yeah. Those are my thoughts. White male rage. White domestic terrorism. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time.